This is the coolest ChatGPT trick on your Mac. Let me show you. Welcome back to the channel. So hold on one second before you click off this. Maybe you're not a huge ChatGPT user, or maybe you don't use AI a lot, or maybe you even do. What I'm gonna show you here though is one of the coolest tricks you can do on your Mac. I'm gonna be using a combination of shortcuts, ChatGPT, and then also the Notes app. And trust me, after you see this, you're gonna figure out a million different ways to use this. It's really kinda of cool. It's easy to learn too. So let's just go through it really quickly and let me just show you. And at the end of the video, we'll come up with some ideas on how to use this. Okay, so for starters, maybe you're not that familiar with the Shortcuts app on your Mac. Don't worry about that. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this, and you can copy it. So hold on one second. Let's take a look at my screen. What you want to do here is you want to go down to your apps here, and you're going to scroll all the way down here. You want to be on kind of the newest OS if you can here. Just make sure you're kind of updated. And you want to look for that Shortcuts app. It's somewhere in here. So it's, I'm going to be under Other here, and it's going to be right here. See this little logo? So double-click on that Shortcuts app, and you're going to bring it. It may bring you up to like this, this gallery here or something. You may actually see something a little bit different like this the first time you log in. But all you want to do is click on all shortcuts here. And don't worry what's in here. I've created a whole bunch of these. But go ahead and click on the little plus symbol over here, right? Click right there. So all we want to do here is I'm going to kind of zoom in here. So we want to go ahead and just create the base for this. And once we create the base for this application, you'll be able to do a whole bunch of crazy stuff with ChatGPT that's incredible. And I'm going to show you how to do this. And then you guys can kind of come back to me and tell me how you're actually using this, all right? Let's create the app really quickly. So take a look over here. The very first thing you want to do is over here on the left-hand side, type in ask like that, and then just say ask, basically, what is it? Ask for input. See right there? Double-click on that. So it's going to say ask for text, right, with prompt. And you can leave this alone. So that's the very first thing you added to your program there. What you're going to do next is go back over here. And what I want to do is here is set, just click in set, var, like that. And then you see set variable right there. Double-click on that. So now it's going to say set variable, and then it's going to say variable name to ask about ask for input. So you can see how this is tied. So we're basically assigning a variable to whatever you input here. So what I want to do is I want to call this variable something. For this test, I'm going to click right here, and I'm just going to call this VAR, actually VAR5, like that, all right? And then click Enter. So now I'm going to set this variable called VAR5 to whatever I inputted over there. So we're kind of passing that information on. It's really easy here. But now that we have the variable set, we have to get this variable. So let's go over here, and we're going to click this time. We're going to type in get, just like that, and then start typing variable. And you're going to see it come up right here. Get variable right there. Double click on that, all right? So right here, it's going to say get, and then click here. And you're going to say all the way down here, see we created that var5. It's listed down here now. See it right there? So click on that. So now we've actually created the variable, and we've we basically got or get the, the variable right here. You can see it right there. So whatever we put in this text prompt is going to kind of work its way down. And that's the first step here. Okay, this is going to go really quick, so I'm just going to finish this up. But trust me, stay tuned for all of this because it's so cool. All right, let's look back over here. The next thing we want to do over here is we want to use a certain model, which is the ChatGPT model. You have to have this enabled on your computer. I'm not going to go through that in this video. Make sure it's set up in your settings, you know, in, in, on your Mac to make sure you can actually use this. But if you do have it set up, over here you want to type in over here. Let me just show you again. You want to type in use right there and then use model. See it right there? So double click on that. So now it's going to say use private cloud compute. We don't want to use that, right? What we want to use is if you click on this, we want to go down to chat GPT. It's an extension. See it there because I have it set up. So you want to click on that. Now it's going to say use chat GPT. And then there's this request here. See this? So really simple in here. This is all we have to do for this next step. And let's just keep moving. Okay, so the very next thing we have to add down here is going to be show. We have to show this now. So we're going to type in show here and look for this where it says show content. See it right there, show content, and double click on that, all right? So it's going to say show and then response, and you can leave it exactly like that. And then basically, there's one last thing here to do is we're going to add this to our notes. So anytime this process flows through, we're going to add basically what comes out of it into our notes app and in, in, in the actual Apple notes. And trust me, this is all going to make sense in a second. But let me just actually set this up first, and then we're going to run the program, and I'm going to show you exactly what it does. Okay, so over here, what you want to do is you want to type in create like this, and then note, just like that. Find create note, double click on it. It's going to say create note with response. So we're basically getting the response from here. We're passing it over here, 
and then it's gonna say in what folder. Now this thing's smart enough to know when I click on this right here, when I click on folder, it lists some of the folders that I have in my notes here. And I've actually set up a folder called testing. So it already knows I have that folder in there. So I'm actually gonna put this response into my testing folder right there, which is in notes. And again, I'm talking about the notes inside of notes in here. This is gonna be basically your notes, obviously in, in Apple notes, all right? I just wanna make sure that's very clear, your notes app right there. So it knows that it's gonna actually put the response in there. So we've created this application so far, but what does this thing actually do? Like, this is the cool part. Let me just show you what I mean here, but you can do just about anything with this. It all depends on how you set it up. Let's see. Okay, so let me just explain what this does. This is gonna ask you for a text prompt here. It's gonna set a variable, and it's gonna throw that variable in the chat GPT here, and then it's gonna come out with a response, and then finally print it in your notes, all right? It's pretty simple. So if I go ahead and put a request in here, let me actually remove this for a second. I wanna just show you something. So I typed this here. Now you can type in anything you want here, and this will make a lot more sense in a second, but I typed in summarize the input you get from, and you can see from where, right? So you're gonna hit a space here, and you're gonna type in basically here's the variable right here var5 so start typing that in var you're going to see that it shows up right there you just don't want to actually just you know you want to make sure that it shows up here and you click on it because you want it to be actually show up here as this orange so it's actually you know identified the variable if it doesn't show up if it's just all black here it means it's not grabbing the variable so make sure you actually grab the variable by start typing it and it's going to show the variable name there right just make sure you do that so now what this means is i actually typed all this in it says once we get all this information from here it's going to go into chat GPT and it's going to say basically you know once I enter it with a prompt here it's going to say summarize the input you get from the var5 if you receive a URL then visit the link read the website article and summarize the article keeping it about one page or less only with key points that would be important the summary of the article should be in a format that somebody could use to discuss the article on YouTube channel clearly show this in a format with the key info listed in the bullet format with a good space with good spacing. You know, this could be anything you want to put in here. I'm just kind of showing you. Place a good title at the top of the summary with spacing. If you don't get a URL and instead if you just get text, you should be able to summarize the text in the same format as we described above. So it's saying like if you get a URL, go through the URL, uh, basically summarize it. If you just get text, go ahead and just summarize the text. Then it's gonna come out with the chat GPT response, but then it's gonna add it to your notes. See over here, that's what we did before. So now what we can do is, first of all, let's just name this something. We're gonna say summarize articles, all right? I mean, you can name this anything you want. You type it up here, you click off of it, then it saves it in, see that? Now when I shut this down, let me just shut this down here. You can see it's right here, right? So if I wanna run this, I can click this little plus or this little arrow here and it's gonna run this. You can also go like right click on this and you can go ahead and add this to the doc, all right? So look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the doc. Actually, I think I didn't do it there. Add it to doc there. Now I'm gonna minimize this. So actually, let's move this over here. So now it's down in the doc. You can see it right here, summarize article. So let's just try this really quickly and see what happens. So I'm gonna click on this really quickly. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna, let me actually minimize this. It opened up this prompt, right? And remember I said like you can type anything in here, but that whatever you type in here is gonna be that var5. That's gonna be what you're passing to ChatGPT. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. Let's find an article that we wanna actually summarize. So let's just say I'm over at this article. You can see it here, this trip light article. It's basically USB port speeds and types compared. It's got all this information on here. You don't wanna go through all this, right? So you can basically just go ahead and copy this up here, the link. And then you go into here, right here, and just go like that, and you're gonna paste it into here, and then you're gonna click done. But let me minimize this first. You're gonna click done here. Now watch what happens. It's gonna take some time depending on exactly you know, how fast your computer is. It's gotta read that article, summarize it, but look at back over here, it's already done. So it's actually summarized it for me right here. Now what I wanna do over here is just click done. Watch what happens. It opens up your notes really quickly, and look at in the notes. It actually added it here with the title here, you know, type standards and speeds, understanding USB, and then it listed basically all the key points from the article. Now, it's pretty simple here, so I can go ahead and edit my prompt to make it more complicated or make it less complicated, but what it's doing is it's automatically adding a note based off that article, so you can keep that information for later. It's really cool. So let's go back into the chat GPT. So if I actually minimize this, all right, and we bring up chat GPT again, or short, I'm sorry, not chat GPT, shortcuts, I'm sorry. Let me see if I can get in there. It's right over here, I'm sorry. So here we are. So in order to go ahead and kind of reprogram this, summarize article, just double click on it again, and I can make this text say anything I want. Okay, let's just try one more really quickly, and then we're gonna show you some recipes, and then we're gonna talk about how you can use this. So the next thing you wanna do is here is we're just gonna go back into Safari back over here, and we're gonna find something over here for Mac Rumors. Here's another article you can see. It's a whole bunch of stuff in here. I'm just gonna select this one here, click 
copy it. I'm going to copy the URL. We're going to minimize this. Since we created this program, it's always down here in the dock here. So I'm going to click on summarize the article. Go ahead and go ahead and punch that in and then just click done. It's going to go ahead and run. So while it's thinking about that, we can talk about now that little prompt that you put in there. Depending on what it gives you back, you can tell it to do anything you want. You can tell it to put things in specific spots, use graphs. You can do whatever you want in that thing, and it's going to come back with the article and give you a different representation of how the article's written. So don't be afraid. If it, the formatting's off or something, just write how you want the formatting in there. It's basically ChatGPT. It's going to do all that stuff for you and then kind of rework the article in notes so that it looks better. Okay, so that one came back, and take a look at this. From that article, this actually did a better job of formatting and stuff, but I went ahead and formatted everything for me, and you can see in here it's pretty cool. So if you were actually doing a video on this and you wanted to get all the key points in here, it'll list them right for you, but it saves it right to the notes. I ran this a few times. The thing that's weird here is if you say, like, add graphs and stuff, you may get something like this. This is the same article, but look at this. This actually did add some graphs for me here, and it actually did a lot of the same bullet points, but it's going to change it up. So the, the moral of the story is whenever you go into shortcuts over here, and you click on this thing, you know, whatever you put in here, you put very, very specific details like you would a chat GPT prompt, and it's going to be able to format that, that article for you any way that you want. So if that makes any sense. So once you get the program done, you can create multiple of these programs, have multiple things down here, you know, obviously here, and then you can have, you know, have them to do different tasks and stuff. And like I said, this isn't just for like a URL. You can actually cut and paste text in here as well. So if I go ahead and let's just do this really quickly. I hope that I know this is kind of running long. I'm going to show you a couple other things here. But if you go back down here, click on this. So if I just took the text in here and I kind of just copied it too. The way I wrote that application, let me just do this. So the way I wrote that application, I'm just going to copy all this text here. And we're going to minimize this, and we're going to minimize this. As I said, even if you don't get a URL, if you just get text, go ahead and summarize that as well. So if I go like click on this here, and now I can just go ahead and just you know paste that right in here. So here's all the text I pasted in. I can click done here. So what's going to happen is it doesn't need the URL. It just needs text as well, because that's what I wrote in the prompt. I said, if you get a URL or if you just get text, still summarize it. And here it comes back. Take a look over here. Same article. I just copied it in this time. So I'm going to click done. It's going to launch it here, and it's created another note over here. Take a look. So this is a little bit, you know, simpler because I didn't. I don't think I copied the entire article, but it's always going to be a little bit different. But it does give you all the key points in here. So whether it's an article or a URL, you can paste it, and it's still going to work the same. All right, let me just show you one more example here of what you can do completely different than what I showed you. At least it's kind of the same thing, but different. But then we can talk about how this can be used a million other ways. All right, and then you guys can post in the comments. Maybe you collect recipes. You ever see those recipes that have like a million, you know, lines of stuff online and you have to read everything? Well, maybe you just want this to take care of it and then you want to add it to a specific folder in your notes so that you can have all your recipes in there. This is super easy, but let me just show you how this works. Same thing where it says summarize article. We created this obviously, but you could create a new one. I'm just going to change this one. So in here, what I'm going to do is let me go ahead in here and I'm going to go ahead and just remove all that text. Again, I can put anything I want in here. I'm going to paste in this, all right? So I'm going to say when you receive the input URL from... Now, let me actually go ahead and change this again. See how that's black? You have to change this to VAR. Now, you want to go ahead and click right there because it's going to be VAR5. That's just what I named it. You could have named it VAR1, VAR2, VAR3, VAR4, anything. It'll show up here, but make sure it's orange and orange. See that? So once you get the URL from here, please review the recipe and summarize the recipe in a simple format that I can use later. Format the recipe in a very clear format with double spacing so that it'll look good when printing the recipe. Please also only add key information to complete the recipe. Um, please add a title of the recipe at the top. You get the idea. I, that's what I typed in. You can type in anything you want there. So the same thing. I'm just going to run it from here this time. But I can actually, let me go ahead and get that. Let me actually find a recipe first, all right? So here we go. Here we go from all recipes. This is kind of a common site here. What is this? Unstuffed cabbage roll. So look at this thing. It's got all this information here, pictures and all this information. I just want a very simple you know, way to go ahead and grab the recipe, right? So I'm going to go up to the top up here. I'm going to copy it right there, all right? And then we're going to go ahead and minimize this. And like I said, inside of here, when you're actually doing the program, if you just want to test it, you can actually just click this little plus button. It's going to run the app. I'll show you. Click that. It's going to run it right here. I'm going to type in that, you know, the URL right there and click done. Watch what happens. So it's thinking right here. This kind of shows you how it's thinking here. It's kind of green. And then it's going to take a couple seconds. Now, my computer's a little bit slower. Yours is going to be a lot faster. This is just an M1. But then I had, here you go. So I'm going to click done here. 
It's gonna go ahead and launch the notes again. Now I could have put this into a recipes folder, but I just have it in this testing folder. But again, it made it really, really easy for me. Look at it, it gave me the ingredients. It gave me basically three things to do here and it's done. And then it also said for more details, visit the original recipe at all recipes, see that? And I can click on this, it's gonna take me right back to here. So how did I actually do that? So that's actually a good thing to add the URL in there. So if I go back in here, let me go back to the shortcuts app. What I did in here is I actually said, and I actually missed it this time, but it still was able to figure out the VAR5. But I said, also print out VAR5. See it down there? But I probably should have put it like this, where it's, you know, I should have probably printed it out a little bit differently, like this, VAR, like that, all right? So it understands it better. But you get the idea. Long story short, it, it worked, right? And it gave me the URL. So sometimes you're going to have to kind of fool around. Sometimes you won't. But either case, it's a really cool thing where you can incorporate all these programs together. Okay, so at the end of the day, how is this useful, right? Well, let's take a look. Once you have the program done here, anything you put in here, ChatGP is gonna basically read it, and any variable that you pass into here, and when you actually set up your variables here, it's gonna be able to take the information that you input and then do whatever prompt you put in here. So there's a million different ways to actually use this. Now, that's what I want people to post in here. Think of other ways you can use this for, and uh, it could be just a million different things. It's just an easy way where you can add little kind of like applications down here in your, in your doc, and you click on them. One could be summarizing article. The other one could be summarizing recipes. It could be doing a whole bunch of different things, but they're little apps that you create here. And once you create them, you click on them. And I know that you can go ahead and just use ChatGPT in a lot of sense. It's sometimes you can just go in there and do the same thing, right? But this doesn't, you know, it won't automatically add it to your notes. This actually does that. It actually formats everything for you, puts it in the right folder in notes. So if you want to keep quick notes of everything, this is a great way to do it. But post in the comments what you guys think you can do with this. I know I went through this really, really fast and stuff. So so anyways, bear with me here. Try it out. Let me know what you guys think. Again, it's not an exact science. Sometimes you're going to get results that don't look great. Then rewrite your little prompt there and try again. And then if it doesn't work again, if it doesn't give you the information you expect or it gives it in a weird format, rewrite the prompt again. It's not always going to be perfect. That's the beauty and fun of this thing. You kind of fool around with it and you kind of massage the perfect prompt there. I just showed you really quick prompts. I'm going to do another video later with some really extreme kind of heavy lifting on this to show you exactly how powerful this can be. But right now, I just wanted to give you the basics. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. We will talk to you in the next one. Peace.